Hello everyone. I heartily welcome you all to the technology upgrade meeting of Pratyusha Engineering College. Here is Adarsh and Srileka from Department of Information Technology second year presenting a seminar on the topic 3D internet which is one of the most powerful and emerging technologies in the current scenario. So before getting into the topic of 3D internet, we'll just see the outline of the topics which we are going to see today. So first we'll be seeing what is a 3D internet and next we'll see why do we need 3D internet. And then we'll be seeing about how can 3D internet be made possible and the evolution of 3D internet, the implementation of VR ML technology and the literature survey of both 2D and 3D internet, the technical implications and the challenges which we are going to face when we are going to imply this technology and the 3D web technologies and also the applications finally. Now we'll see what is 3D internet. Have you ever imagined like how the internet will look like in future years, like most probably after 10 years or 20 years? Will there even be an internet or will we be the internet? Wow, it's very fascinating to look into it, right? Maybe after 20 years or 25 years, is it something like new or it may turn a 3D web or 3D internet? Let's see. Like interesting, like existing internet, uh, that is in the current scenario, we are using 2D internet. The 2D internet is an extremely abstract entity and it consists of nothing but a bunch of documents and pictures. It won't have any real feel or realistic feel or 3D view. 3D internet is a powerful combination of two forces. These two forces are internet and 3D graphics. The 3D internet is inherently very interactive and engaging. Like 2D internet, it will have browser, search engine and servers. But as compared to 2D internet, it will make the world more social. So the 3D internet is actually very much better alternative way of organizing data, which everybody knows and uses. It's a very interactive medium for interaction. Instead of, image, instead of words, we can use images. So the people who are uneducated or don't know to study, they can see the images and understand what is actually going to be spoken or what is going to be delivered to the people. And it's a very new and innovative way to reach customers, partners and students. And uh, the marketing will be a very good area. And for the students, suppose if we take a real time example, and if we are sitting in a classroom, students may get distracted some sometimes and they may get feel boring. But in 3D internet, there will be very ch less chances of getting distracted or boring because everything will be seeming in a realistic way and there will be many chances for imagination and creativity so we can also understand the concepts very better and in a clear clear manner it replicates real life and it shows everything in a realistic manner and there will be very much uh, very less difference between the real world and the world which we see in our computers or smartphones so it will be very interesting and fascinating now we'll see why we need 3D internet. So actually this 3D internet can be used in various platforms like shopping, social interactions, for interior designs, gaming, as well as education. So if you see like shopping, we can, will be, will be interesting to have the 3D shopping because we'll be able to see the objects in real time. We'll be able to interact with them. Even we can ask our suggestions to the shopkeeper. We'll be able to interact with them in real time just by sitting at home and easy social interactions you'll be able to speak to your friend or speak to your friend who will be somewhere else like in a distant place and when you are making use of this 3d technology you will be just thinking that he's just standing before you and speaking and next is to represent interior design effectively so normally when you are going for any interior designing shop, they'll show you the patterns or something in some booklets or something like that. And you'll be seeing like the, seeing that and choosing how it would be. But the implementation of this 3D technology will bring a drastic change in them. You can just sit at your home and look at your walls and you can just swipe and um, just uh, create your own interior designs and check how it is looking in your own home. Next is gaming. And most of the games now we are playing is actually real time because it is running on real time servers and we are able to interact with other players in real time. 
but now if the same technology is coming in 3d internet what will happen is we will be the player who are playing inside the game and we'll be having a very immersive and extensive feel of playing that game and next is distance learning if you are sick or if you are at home and even in this pandemic situation everyone are using making use of this online classes technology and now if we have 3d internet think how it will be it will be like we are sitting just in a virtual environment which will be like a class and teachers will be standing in front of us and we can even see our friends sitting be- beside us and we'll be able to interact with everyone and attend the class because when we are using making use of uh, this online classes we may feel distracted move away or we can do whatever we want when we are doing this but making use of this 3d technology now what will happen is everyone can sit in an immersive experienced environment where you can interact with your teachers in real time interact with your friends in real time and you won't be distracted at all if we see about the applications of this 3d internet in field of education if we are taking some seminars presentations or tutorials something like that we can just interact with people who are listening to that in real time even they will be interactive they will ask more questions we can see them and answer them back how their expression is everything we can see by making use of this 3d technology next is campus tours most of us would have came to our college before joining our college and would have taken a campus visit so as to see what is the architectural design what are the facilities we are having how are the teachers and everything by making use of this 3d technology will bring this experience to a next level so you'll be like sitting at your home just wearing your 3d technology devices and you will be getting inside the college and viewing which of all things you want whenever you are coming to campus visit you may have some restrictions by but when you are using this 3d technology you won't have any restriction and you'll be able to see wherever you want and next is about debates and group discussions so nowadays debates and group discussion mostly it will be like people will be sitting in real places and they'll be interacting with each other because they want to make the debates more interesting if it is on online chats it won't be nice but by making use of the 3d technology it will be like everyone is sitting in front of us and they are interacting with each other in real time we will be able to see them just in 3d like sitting in front of us and speaking to each other and the debate will run in a very good manner and the same thing if we say about applications in shopping we'll get a very good real time experience we'll be able to interact with the products just in real time you'll be able to lift it in your hand and view all the 3d aspects of the product next is effortless you don't have to walk or you don't have to go or you don't have to stand in queue for paying your bills anymore just can sit at your home see the products what you want you can add it to your cart and pay the bill and you can relax next is try and buy this option is very good when you are buying some uh, goods which you don't know how it will function so when buying some electronics some people will be uh, buying just by seeing the images and they don't know how it's working so by this option what you can do is you can just lift the objects in your hand you can just view it use it try if you like you can buy it else you can throw it aside and come next is can even shop with friend you can even make a call to your friend and ask him can you join with me in shopping and they can join the and join using their 3d device and you can join and both can go to the same shop and you will be able to interact with each other and like and buy products you can also interact with the other customers who are coming into the same shopping they will be also visible to you and you can just go and interact with them in real time so now after seeing why do we need 3d internet and what is 3d internet we will see how does the 3d internet work or how can 3d internet be made possible so now let us have a look at the 3d internet architecture or a graphical depiction of proposed 3d internet architecture here is the architecture and uh, we have many components here like universal location servers with dns id and avatar servers world servers local database and clients so here the main components are we have world servers right so the world servers provide user or server side created static and dynamic making up the specific workplace including visuals and all the things and uh, the avatar servers play important role in keeping the visual identity management system here the universal location servers will have visual location management system similar to the dns 
but it will include current dns providing geographical information as well as connection to the internet via many methods and the local database server will have the data which is received from the world server and then it will be transported to the clients so what is the function having here is normally in the 2d architecture we'll have uh, loc universe location servers with dns world servers local database and clients so whatever the information is there it will be stored in the servers and then it will be transported to the world servers and from there the information will be distributed or transported to the local database from there we'll get through that uh, will the uh, the information will be transported to the clients or else they can uh, directly take the information from the world server itself but here another thing which is added is id or avatar service here in the id or avatar service there it will be storing the 3d view or pictorial representation of data and holographic images and everything will be stored in the id or avatar service so first when we give the text format the all the things will be stored in the universe location service with the geographical information from where it is getting stored and in the avatar service there will be 3d view and from there it will be transported to the world server so world service will have a combination of both the geographical information data and also 3d data from there the local databases and companies can access it and through that many clients working in several walks of society can access those data and use it this can be done by using three major components one is when we are viewing we need to have google glasses like when we go to a 3d movie they'll give a 3D sprites, right? In the same way, we can use Google Glasses. And when you are moving the things, when you are working on it, you can use a 3D mouse. Similar way, how we are using in a 2D mouse. But actually, no need of using 3D mouse and mics. Mics, mom, you need not use because there will be a small technology called eye, tra eye tracking technology. With that technology, you can control all the things by seeing your eyes itself. Uh, how you may get doubt like how will control the things on by seeing the by with the help of eyes so there will be a sensors and there will be things called holographic images so by using all this you can just control the things which you want to present it on the screen by using eyes and sometimes you can touch and see since it's 3d it will be very fascinating and interesting this is how the architecture and the 3d internet is working like this And now we are going to see the evolution of 3D internet. So before I say about 3D internet, we'll see what all the types of webs we are having. So we have web 1.0, web 2.0, and web 3.0. And we'll see what are the differences between these three, because these three are having a very drastic difference between all the three. When we come to web 1.0, it is just having pictures and documents. And the main limitations of this web pages are is, Whoever or uh, whatever, whoever the clients are or whatever the requirement is, whoever is coming to this website will see the same thing which all the users are saying. So if you ask me an example for these websites, I will say like adobe.com, microsoft.com and cnn.com. So what, why I am saying this as example is adobe.com, if you enter into that website, whether you are from uh, some other place or whatever aspects your requirements are, it won't show anything according to that. It will just show what all the graphics are having. For example, when we take Adobe, we have Adobe Photoshop, we have Premiere, we have Dreamweaver, and we have extensive um, softwares like this for making 3D graphics. And next is Microsoft.com. So you may all know about Microsoft.com for its famous operating system, which is Windows, and which will be mostly running in everyone's computer or laptop nowadays. So whoever is going into Microsoft.com will definitely get link for their OS or some of the products only. They, it won't be like a dynamic web page which is providing se uh, separate information for separate people. Next is CNN.com, which is a news network. You, whoever is going into that website will definitely see news about something uh, and everyone will be seeing the same content only. And when this upgraded from 1.0 to 2.0, what happened is, Along with pictures and documents, we started to see videos in Web 2.0. So the main examples I can give you here is YouTube, Flickr, Wikipedia. So if you ask me like what's the difference between the first one and second one, the main difference is then uh, if you take YouTube as example, if you are a person who likes tech or if you are a person who like animation or if you are a person who like cartoons or whatever, when you are searching that for one or two days, the YouTube algorithm 
a which will be running in background will recognize what you are searching on which genre you are most interested in and next day when you are opening the same website again you will be having an extensive amount of recommendation on the topic which you have searched search history and same thing if you come to wikipedia if you are reading something from a particular novel series or if you are reading from a particular author or if you are reading some uh, category of articles next time when you are opening wikipedia with your account it is definitely going to show you either that author's book or either the genre's book and then this again got upgraded into web 3.0 now what happened is along with video we started to get 3d images and 3d graphical representations also and uh, this is an integration of data over the internet from various means actually so it will be an integration of all the devices which we are having now like our cell phones our laptops even now we have cars which are even smarter like our uh, smartphones and all we can even control cars by using voice recognition so all these technologies are made possible by the implementation of the 3d web technology so now we'll see a pictorial view of the web 1.0 and web 2.0 so first the top picture is the web 1.0 so as i said you'll be having a webmaster and he'll be taking off the site or his domain and all the internet surfers will be coming and viewing the content and the content will be same for each and every one but when you come to the web 2.0 here you'll have a webmaster and you'll have internet surfer contributors will be contributing contents to the other people who are watching them and there will be online social network so if you ask me a real time example for this it is actually youtube so youtube is from google so google will be having a domain manager for maintaining this www.youtube.com and he will be the webmaster who will be taking care of the domain and you know like there are youtubers who are taking care of their channels who are producing valid contents for their viewers who are online social uh, network so they will be viewing the videos under their channel or under their category so they will be their online social network so whatever videos they are posting and they will be getting it in real time and they will be even able to add comments and interact with them in real time so now after seeing what is 3d internet why 3d internet is used and what's the architecture of 3d internet now we'll see implementation of 3d internet using a technology called vrml what is vrml it actually stands for virtual reality modeling language if you think this has something to do with html you are absolutely right while html is the format for web page production vrml is a 3d navigation specification which enables the creation of interactive 3d websites with vrml you can actually take virtual tours through buildings and view three dimensional models of cars directly from their web browsers this technology was actually created by silicon graphics and intervista software it's created a number of years ago but it's not still used and if we have this 3d techno 3d internet then this technology will be surely used so now we'll see exact uh, thing how to use it the very first thing you need for vrml technology is a vrml browser we have seen right in 2d we have html for html we normally write a code in text editor like wordpad or notepad and then we need a browser like google chrome or internet explorer to see what is the page displaying for the code we have written in the same way the first thing you need here in vrml technology is vrml browser first you need to create an idea for the idea which you created you need to see it in the screen right so for that you need to download a vrml browser and the most popular one here is cosmo player it is actually played using this player and this is from a software called cosmo software the next thing you need to do after having an idea is you need to write the code for that there are two ways of doing this first you can use any vrml authoring tools like we use the authoring tools in the html for making the code in the same way we can use vrml authoring tools which are like 3d modelers you can build in your world or other way is you can code it by your hand it's somewhat difficult for us but it's okay if you are very strong in coding then you can code it in by your hand itself all you need is just a text editor such as notepad or wordpad just simply type the code in and save it in a file name uh, save it as file name.wrl 
WRL is an extend extension for VRML browser. How we have how we save same thing like uh, if, if we do the coding for HTML, we'll save it like file name dot HTML, right? And then we'll minimize it and we'll check the display or portraying on the Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. So it when it gets stored as dot HTML extension, you will have a web page. In the same way, this is also a web page, but it's not a 2D web page. It's a 3D web page. So you can save it and then you will get an implementation for it. So let's see a sample code. It's a just small code for it. Here we are using an encoder, standard encoder called UTF-8. And here we are trying to create a cylinder. Just basic type. Uh, you can do many things on this. Just uh, we shall go everything step by step. So we are creating a cylinder. Here we are giving a shape and we need appearance for it. We need to see appearance and the geometry we are specifying a cylinder. Same way in other languages we'll specify right data type and then we'll specify whatever the function name or thing we are giving to. In the same way the geometry is a cylinder. You can give any other things like cuboid, sphere, everything. And for cylinder we need mainly base radius and height. So we are specifying the values height and radius. Here the shape is called a node. The same way, suppose in 2D we have right edges and all. In the same way, here shape is called node. And the appearance which we are specifying and geometry cylinder, these two are called fields. So and height and radius, we know that these are attributes and the values we are specifying is as values. So the right side we have a picture, right? Translation, scale, rotation. Actually, in 2D, we have two axes, x-axis and y-axis. But in 3D, we'll have three, x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And we'll have planes, different, different planes. So xy plane, yz plane, and zx plane. So in this, we have some properties like translation, scale, and rotation. Since it's graph-based thing, we need to specify scale. Just usually, we'll specify, right? The what is the scale? What are the dimensions? like that and for translation they have given a zero translation so there won't be any translation of the axis rotation they have given as x uh, x as one and y is it so they are rotating on the xy plane and the rotation they have given is 1.57 degrees the degree of rotation is 1.57 actually you can have a very interesting experience for this because as you change the values of each thing the thing which is going to be displayed on the screen will change when you are trying to rotate it when you change the values of rotation and when you change the values for translation and all, it will be translating into the different different axes and it will be rotating so that you will get a feel that you are uh, catching that object and rotating it. So it will be very nice. When you click on show me, it will be displayed like as you want. Here the VRML file, it contains mainly these things. File header will be there and comments. Comments are the most beautiful way to express what you're feeling without reading the codes. So if you want to show it to someone else or if anything is like project or if you're making anything lab live experiment, then the person who is seeing it can easily understand it by reading uh, comments than seeing the whole code. And notes, I have seen, I have said, right, it suggests nuggets of seen information what you're giving. And fields are known attributes you can change and the fields will have the values. And you can give attribute values for the thing for the attributes you have created. This is the implementation works, and this is the code we have to write. It's very simple code and very interesting code. And now we are going to see about the literature survey of two D technology as well as three D technology. So now currently, when we are using two D technology, the things we are facing is the first is the less interactiveness. Yeah, when we are seeing a website which is from the studio internet it will be like we are having less images and more documents as i said before but the main thing about this is that we won't be able to get a clear cut thing about our product which we are going to buy and the next thing is more wastage of time since we are not having more images and not having more graphical representation and everything is in the form of documentation we will be spending more time and wasting on them just by reading documents or uh, just trying to under uh, understand it by just reading it line by line and next is lack of proper presentations. So if you take the online shopping example, when you're going to buy some product, they won't be showing much. They'll be just showing you the front, back, and they won't say much anything. Even they won't say what is present inside and whatever it is. They'll be just showing you the outer look and 
even the outer look won't be that much specific it will be an outer look of some other product and when you're purchasing that and when it's coming to your home it will look like something different uh, and it will be more worse than the product which you actually saw in the internet but by the implementation of this 3d technology what will happen is we'll have a more interactive environment so here the comfort level will be more and it they will be reduced mouse movements because you don't have to make use of your mouse i said like you can just move your hands and move things you can take things in your hand and view the 3d models of the things and you can even have that uh, 3d mouses which can, which will be more convenient than the normal 2d mouses which we are using currently and it's simple yet effective representation so here we'll be having 3d images right so when you are using 2d images there will be one click for front one click for back one click for side but when you have this 3d images you will be able to take that object in your hand you'll be able to get a 3d uh, interaction with that object and you will be able to turn that object and see from whichever angle you want and even increase speed of working then the story technology um in 3d technology what we can do is we can make use of some of the uh things which we are having um like you don't have to code your own website you can just design it by using this 3d technology you can just think what and what should be there and you can just place it using the softwares which are present and you can just make your own website now we'll see what are the technical implications of 3d internet we have seen that it's a uh, web 3d so obviously this is 3.0 version and we need a language for it to make uh, 3d views and portray it on the screen for that we'll use vrml language as we have discussed virtual reality modeling language and a servers we said right as we have servers in 2d the same servers will have will have servers search engines and browsers also but in that uh, servers in addition to the text files and the information we have we'll have 3d pictorial view that data also will be there in this servers and they will be using some java applets for the codes and the network that uses 3g technology will have a maximum bandwidth of up to 14.4 mbps and http it allows html files scripts etc because the basic thing which we have to do is we have to get an idea and first we have to code it in a text format so obviously http is required to support html files and give responses to the server everything will work in the same way as we are working in the 2d internet but in addition to it you will have a pictorial and 3d view of representation also so we need we mean http responses and everything protocols will be the same and dns servers domains everything will be the same so these are all the technical implications that we are required for 3d internet and now we are going to see about the challenges that we are going to face when we are implementing this 3d internet technology so first is platform performance so for platform performance we'll be reading a very ex intensive client and server and next is constant bandwidth so you if you want to interact with something in real time for example if you take a game if it is a real time game and ra running on a real time server if there is not a constant bandwidth and if you are having some fluctuation in your internet it will be like it will be throwing you out of the server or it will be reconnecting or loading for you and the next is low latency if your internet is having a very high latency then there are chances that you may not be able to view the things in the way which you wanted for example if you are trying to view something and if you are having a very high latency internet and if you are taking the thing in your hand the textures may not load very fast as compared to it is loading in the fast internet so you'll be waiting for more time and after the techno and after the textures is loaded only you can take a full view about those objects and user created contents portable it, it's actually very much portable across the world so whatever you are creating you can just throw it in any throw it in a portable device and you can just take it any way you want and next is ease to use tools so as i said you don't have to sit and write codes for anything it's not like you won't need codes at all but if you are just going to make a simple website it will be very easy you don't have any you don't need any codes you can just think which should be which and where uh, it should be placed you can just design it with your hands and you can make your own website and next is realistic rendering 
so when you are uh, creating something in 3d internet you can just see how it is rendering in front of your eyes so if you are making some changes there it will be just showing here and you will be able to get an uh, real time interaction between the objects and one more challenge is in stimulation services we need a dense avatar scaling because if we are not giving very dense avatar scaling what will happen is if the density is less so it will look like transparent images and we won't feel like it's a real object or we won't get the real feel of the thing which we're seeing in the virtual world or real time objects so we need to have some dense dense scaling and one more thing is diverse client types uh, it has to support very diverse client types because here when we are using 3d internet there there are many walks of society like some companies will be there in educational system educational institutions will be there and marketing institutions will be running on and different different uh, in uh, companies will be there so many people will be using it and it has to support very diverse client types so some people everyone when we use 3d it has to support each and everyone's area so whatever the things if for if we take the example of gaming they need more graphics and everything so it has to support that and at the same time it has to support educational institutions what they are teaching and what is their level of expectations and all so if that is, that doesn't reach the client type expectation then it won't be that much effective so it should have very diverse client types for each and every area it has to have certain things and it has to meet expectations of every client so it has to have very diverse and unified graphics or physics so when you are doing this actually i told you right when we are specifying geometry there should be some graphical processing unit in that like uh, which has to support the geometry and pixels we are giving it and the shades we are giving it suppose if we take a real time object every object won't have the same shades when we rotate it it will have different shades and when we uh, move it, when we are moving it by using the 3d mouse or something so when we are moving it with the help of mouse or hand it has to get different different shades and it has to move accordingly it should not move very fast or it should not move very slow so it has to have all the shades and the pixels and all when we are moving it should not get separated so it has to have the shading and so these all should be taken care of that graphical processor unit that should be there it's one of the hardware it has to meet expectations and one of this is ecosystem it has it ecosystem here it is it will meet all the stimulation standards because when you are having the this scaling and all it has to meet all the stimulation standards and it has to meet browser standards also because when it doesn't meet browser standards suppose if it is lagging somewhere or if it is getting slow then the person who is viewing it will not feel interested and there is there is a chance that he won't use it much so it has to meet browser standards and one more thing is the main thing here is identity with anonymity he uh, it will give very much security because when you are speaking with some other people suppose take an example of you are speaking with a client if you were, like suppose take an example like you are in somewhere and you are speaking to some other person with a client you are explaining everything to him so it will be like the person is just sitting in front of you and you are speaking so whatever you are speaking should not be shared with third party or whatever the thing you have you should have your own pi uh, privacy so these all will be taken care of this and it will give the security for you and these are some of the 3d web technologies they'll be using like we have suppose uh, now in 2d we have many technologies right for web development in 2d we have uh, hibernate spring frameworks like this we have many other uh, technologies right so like that in 3d also we have various web technologies some of the examples are like 3d dreams 3d group allies and 3d atomic 3d blackson 3d and cul 3d these are the website uh, websites for this and these are various web applications for using this technologies and now we are going to see about the applications of 3d web technology so this technology can be extensively used in the field of e-commerce training game entertainment social interactions as well as education so now what you're seeing on screen is actually a real time example of pictorial view of 3d seminar so as you all can see here 
all the people are sitting here and they are make viewing the pre- uh, presentation and a person is standing on the stage and presenting his things so it will be like you are one of this person sitting here and you will be able to interact with these people sitting next to you in real time so you can just turn to them and you can interact and you can even be able to interact with the person who is taking a seminar on the stage and you can ask your questions in real time and he will be replying you in real time so it will be providing a very good uh, experience for you and the next thing now what we are seeing on screen is the 3d shopping using 3d internet as you can see you are having an avatar on frame and you will be making use of that avatar and you can sit at home and you can be that person who is walking there and you can just walking through the store and you can look for the things or you can just go there and uh, you can just select a menu like that so you, from the menu you can get whatever you want or you can just type it in the search box and it will be showing the contents which you want so as you can see in this picture this man is searching for books and see it is showing the prices as well as the book names so he can just go scan there and see the books in real time and he can purchase it he can just see how the books are looking in real life and he can select whatever books he want and he can purchase them so now we'll see what are the advantages of 3d internet it is first thing is it's very interactive now we have seen a video right suppose if we take the example of shopping itself he is going there and he's searching for this and when actually now suppose if we take an example of shopping in our day to day life we'll be very busy and sometimes if we feel that we have to go somewhere we have to purchase something we may not be able to do because of our busy schedule or lack of energy or lack of interest like that so if we sit at home and open our smartphone and see like if we want to shop somewhere so when you open the screen itself you'll feel like you are going to the shop really and you are searching for the things and there you just it, it's not like just searching for the things when you want some product in that you'll just go near that and the person who is selling there will be in front of you you can see him so as it is 3d you'll feel that that person is just in front of you and you're seeing it and if he is selling anything like about electronic applications and all you can ask him to show a video and you can see everything what are the specifications it has and everything you can see so you won't feel like you're uh, being somewhere and you don't know what's the quality of it you won't have these doubts at all so it will be very useful for you and it will be very comfortable for you also and reduced mouse movements yeah you can uh touch it and see you can make the by using hand or 3d mouse you can move it and by using eye tracking technology you just can um refer it you can move around in the whole shop and you can check where is what what is where and all so it's very simple but it's very effective representation because if you uh, suppose if we are playing games 3d games and when we are thinking uh sub- one person will be representing us right so when that person is moving or doing something we'll feel like we are doing it when that feel comes it will be very interesting because 3d games now are very fascinating thing for everyone so like that if it applies to each and every walk of life so it will be very interesting even though it has very simplicity it will be very effective representation because everything will be in 3d images it's not 2d images so it will be very interesting and increased speed of working yeah i have told you right since it has a maximum bandwidth of 14.4 mbps so it will have a good speed and everything since everything is virtualized and we have more virtual servers now which will we are getting clouds right than that if we have virtual servers which has 3d data it will have more increased speed of working and there won't be any lag or anything so everything will be in a in a time of seconds and minutes so it will be very helpful very interactive so i guess you guys would have got a better idea about the 3d internet technology now so we have we are at the conclusion of our seminar so i'll conclude by saying like 3d internet is a step ahead to future which could serve for not only as metaverse but will change the way we perceive internet of today and the making of simple 3d websites can be very much easy as compared to the 2d internet which we are making now and the web pages are going to be replaced most probably by web places 
and many sites are really going to implement this 3D internet for business as well as entertainment purpose. And even colleges and other institutions will definitely implement this technology so as to reduce the burden of people to come and visit their campus. So it is if this 3D internet technology is going to be implemented, then it will bring a very drastic change in the internet community, which is present today. So let's hope for the good. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you very much.